Through music, we hypnotize people. We get them at their weakest point. We preach into their subconscious what we want to say. Now, my question to you is, and I'm pretty sure we can all answer this, what are they trying to preach into our subconscious? Is it the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it to stand with Imam Hussain alayhi salam to man that good and forbid evil? Or no? Fornication, crime, drugs, making the woman out like she's an object, absolutely destroying the family foundation. And he says, we get you at your weakest point. Who was someone that used to listen to music? Aren't we here to say, Labbayka Ya Hussain? To say, O Aba Abdullah Hussain, I am with you. Yazid yes, was someone that used to listen to music. It was something that Yazid used to do. So why has it become so normal? Why has it become so common? To the extent that we don't see it as a sin anymore. Oh, it's just a song. No, Habibi, it's not just a song. What are the effects of music? Number one, them getting us at our weakest point has an objective. And that is to weaken our faith. And to excite within us our animalistic desires. They want us to think the way they want us to think. They don't want us to follow the way of Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt If we refer back to some of the narrations from the Ahlul Bayt about music. They say from Imam Saliq listening to music, songs and useless words cultivate hypocrisy in the hearts in the same way algae grows in water. In another narration beware of music for indeed music plants fitna in the heart and causes evil thoughts in the soul. Imam al-Baqir says, Music is amongst the things for which Allah has promised the fire of hell. Then he recited the above verse. Indeed, successful are the believers, those who in their prayers are humble, and those who keep themselves aloof from vain words. They designed music in such a way so that we leave our religion. We leave the path of Rasulullah and the Ahl al-Bayt. And if we continue to normalize it, like it has no effect on us, the outcome of this, the Ahl al-Bayt, they say, is fitna in the land. Corruption. Not just on ourselves, but on the following generations to come. Another verse in the Quran which says, A'udhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Khatam Allahu Ala Qulubihim Wa Ala Sam'ihim Wa Ala Abasarihim Ghishawatun Wa Lahum Adabun Ar-Rahim Allah has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearing and on their eyes. There is a covering and for them awaits a mighty punishment. When you listen to music, you are placing this veil on yourself. What does this mean? You can no longer make the right decisions. You can no longer choose the right path. Why? Because now 
You are sick. Your minds have been polluted and corrupted with things that distance you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa What is the solution to this? What do we have to do? There's a story. Once, I imagine during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, when Rasulullah came out and he said, I am the Prophet of God, he said, I'm going to go to the land where the Holy Prophet is, and I'm going to pledge my allegiance. So his friend took this opportunity to say, don't go. He tried to persuade him not to go. So he said to him, if you go to Rasulullah, he doesn't allow fornication. He said, yes, this is a beautiful thing. Fornication is something terrible, it's bad. He says he doesn't allow this and this and this. The man said, yes, this is very good. I want to go and pledge allegiance to Rasulullah. So then he got him at his weakest point. He said to him, he doesn't allow drinking alcohol and he doesn't allow listening to music. So the guy goes, oh, one second. Do I go? What I'll do is, is I'll spend a certain amount of time and I'll drink as much as I can and I'll listen to music as much as I can. Then I'll go pledge allegiance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And what happened? Within the next couple of days he died. Who has told us that we are promised tomorrow? You may think it's something simple, but it's these decisions which join us either with Imam al Hussein alayhi salam or with Yazid. So, what can we do? The first thing is is to be like Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. When Imam al Hussein alayhi salam saw something wrong, he saw an injustice, he stood up against it. So what does this look like? In this case, it's something as simple as this. You're with your friends, you're in the car, you're with your friends at their house. Someone wants to turn on some music. Say, Habibi, turn on. This is being with Imam Hussein alayhi salam. This is the true meaning of following the path of Abu Abdullah and Hussein alayhi salam. Having the courage to mandate good and to forbid evil. Because otherwise, our ceremonies will be in vain. If you have a hot coal in your hand, which if you're holding a hot coal, it will burn you. Do you plan on ways to let go of this coal or do you just drop it? That's your reaction. You drop it. So it's not about planning, okay, oh, I'm listening to this music. I'll start decreasing the amount of music I listen to. And then eventually the day will come where I'll stop listening to music. No. What are we here for? What is the purpose of these ceremonies? <coughs> For if it is not to stand with Imam Hussein alayhi salam and make changes in our lives, we are all fooling ourselves. And in fact, we are following the camp, obviously. The West has done this on purpose. There was a time where war would occur with tanks and guns and etc. But now it's a different type of war. The war needs basira. It needs insight. It can't be seen with the physical eye. You need to be aware. The same way the companions of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam they said, Abu Abdullah al Hussein is going forth, I need to go with him. I must go with him. We need to understand what angles the enemy is attacking from. Otherwise, we are giving 
our enemies ammunition to destroy ourselves to destroy our communities and our youth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made no sorry صلى على محمد وآل محمد LEF 808 LEF 808 if the car can be used please anyone knows the car belongs to one more time LEF 808 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made marriage one of the most recommended acts. A marriage is a time in which a brother and a sister meet Islamically to continue their journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and help each other. So what do we do? Yes, it completes half of your religion but unfortunately, these days, we're destroying the other half. With what? With music. Why is it that our marriages, our weddings, need to have music within them? Why are we trying to imitate the West? Why are we trying to copy them? Because if we do not stand up and make these changes, we are all going to fail. Because we are a community. I can think about myself and say, Muhammad, you know that listening to music is just something you're not even going to think about, do Muhammad. But no. من أصبح ولم يهتم بأمر المسلمين فليس بمسلم. So if you're somebody who encourages this type of an act, you are following the camp of Yazid. You are killing Imam Al Hussein عليه السلام. When Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam decided to leave Medina to go to Mecca, then to go to Karbala, why? During the time of Muawiyah, yes, there was corruption. But corruption in the clothing of piety, of Islam. But no, when Yazid came along, he openly started misrepresenting Islam. And that is when Imam Hussain said, If I remain quiet, I am saying this is okay. I'm enjoining evil and forbidding good. But no, Imam Hussain saw an injustice. He got up and he went forth. So why can't we do the same thing? I can speak to you and you can nod your head and say, yeah. Or in front of the believers, what did the verse say? The verse says, you try to deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all seeing and all hearing. So Allah cannot be deceived. You may be able to deceive the believers. In front of you I come, I have a khatim in my hand, I have a masbah in my hand, but when I leave this masjid, this Husayniyyah, I am somewhat contrary in my actions, in my way of life. On the member I speak about Imam Hussain alayhi salam, I call towards Imam Hussain alayhi salam, but outside I kill Imam Hussain alayhi salam and I follow Yazid. It's the truth. 
So what do we do? Number one is we make the decision to not leave this masjid, to not leave this Husayniya. Do you say to yourself, okay, I've come here for a reason. I've come here to follow an Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Allow me to, to start with this. At least start by refraining from something which is going to corrupt your soul, corrupt your thinking, your way of life, your intentions, your relationships with your community, with your family, the way the youth look at us. We are the examples for the youth. If they see us doing bad actions, what are they going to do? Are you going to follow in our footsteps? So Imam Hussain before he decided to leave Mecca and go towards Karbala, and Imam Hussain he came amongst the people. He gathered the people and he said, O oh people, I am going forth. I do not wish to spread injustice nor mischief. I am going forth to reform the religion of my grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and tread in the path of Rasulullah and my father Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi sallam. And this was when on the 8th of Dhul Hujjah, so what? All the Muslims had to be in one location because on the 9th they are going to Arafah. So no one had an excuse to say, I didn't know Imam Hussain was going forth to Karbala. I didn't know that my Imam was going forth. No. They knew their Imam was going forth, but they turned their backs on their Imam. And now this is proof. This is hujja upon you. That if you leave this mosque, if you leave this masjid, if you hear somebody listening to music, if you continue on this path, you are also following the path of Yazid. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma bi haq Fatima wa abiha. وبعدها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها رب صل على محمد وآل يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار يا مدبر الليل والنهار يا محول الحال والأحوال حول حالنا إلى أحسن الحال صلوا على محمد وآل محمد